So I'm going to talk about um, issues as far as manure transportation, but I am going to broaden the presentation a bit more than that to also include uh, legal issues regarding application as well. Um, so the first slide we'll get to uh, presents a, a common scenario that might occur, and that is we've got five or six different people involved in manure application. We've got the landowner, we've got a tenant, we've got the um, producer, applicator, and employee of the applicator. And if something goes wrong, the issue becomes who caused it to go wrong? Who is liable? And if we don't have a good way to remedy that, that's when the finger pointing starts and that's when we get legal fees and end up in courtroom. So part of what I'm going to talk about today is how do we decide who may be liable, who may be liable, um, what's a good way and fair way to address that, and then some of the sources of liability. So for this slide, you know, whose problem is it? Well, it depends. Um, and that's why we would get into issues here of, of who's right, who's wrong. We don't want this scenario. What we want is a good contract that clearly defines uh, who is liable and who is not. So there's two types of laws that may apply to a liability issue. Okay, next slide. The first law that may apply to application or uh, transporting on the road are statutes and regulations. So statutes are uh, codified laws that the Ohio, le the state legislatures pass, um, and also regulations that state and federal agencies may put into place. So I listed a few of the ones we have in Ohio. Um, you probably have similar ones in your state. But one way to be liable for manure application, for manure transport, is to be in violation of one of these laws. So it's really important to know what laws uh, apply in your state and make sure you conform to them. Um, you know, for example, in Ohio, uh, farm machinery, we have no restrictions on width or length of farm equipment, but we do have restrictions on weight. So that's very important to know. And if you're coming in from Ohio, uh, from out of state, uh, you need to know those regulations. And it is your responsibility to know the laws in each state you're working. Uh, ignorance is no excuse under the law. That's a very common concept. Um, and there are federal regulations too. Uh, Clean Water Act is a very common issue that we may run into with manure application, manure issues. Now, if, if the liability does not result from the violation of a law or of a regulation, it's almost always going to be from liability. Those are your two main sources, laws, regulations, or negligence. So what is negligence? Uh, in a very simple sense, it means you did something that a reasonable person would not do and that it caused harm to somebody else. So you have to have those uh, factors to be negligent. And again, that's did you do something that a reasonable person wouldn't normally do and did it cause harm to other people? And keep in mind that this reasonable person is essentially a perfect person. The reasonable person never gets tired, is never on their cell phone driving down the road, uh, is never in a hurry, those sorts of things. So uh, the reasonable person standard does make negligence fairly easy to fall into, but not always. So we've established that there's two possibilities uh, for liability, laws, and negligence. So as you're working with producers, applicators, tenants, 
uh, whoever your client is, how do we allocate liability? And we want to do that, one, so that we know who has the liability at which time, so we don't have five people pointing fingers at each other as to, you're liable for this, I'm not. The best way to do that is a written contract. So I would encourage anybody that's working uh, with manure application to have a written contract with the other party. And what the contract seeks to do, other than establishing things like uh, you know, cost and prices and payment terms and all that sort of thing, what we're talking about today is it establishes who has control over the manure when. So if something goes wrong, we identify where it happened, we can look into the contract and identify who had control at that point, which would then make that party the likely uh, party to be negligent and instead of others. Here's just some uh, common terms and conditions we might put into uh, manure applications, manure transport um, contracts. Uh, there's many, many more that, that may be in your uh, contract, but the main thing is to have a contract. Uh, any contract is better than no contract, and the more terms you can get, for example, some of these on the screen, the better. Uh, the last point there is important, or that's an important factor to have, and that is indemnity. Indemnity means that uh, the person who's not responsible for the liability holds the, the party who is, or, or is held by the other party who is harmless. So if you cause the incident, you will pay all damages and legal fees for the other party. So indemnity helps, it protects both parties. It says if you're not the one that caused it, cause the liability, you don't have to pay for it, the other party does. So probably of, of all these, I would say indemnity is the most important to have in your contract. Um, just some more uh, factors here. I'm not going to go through each one in detail, uh, but the, the last one there, clarify when liability shifts from one, one party to another. That's really important. And that is um, you know, once it's loaded on the truck or the tanker, you know, it becomes the hauler's responsibility. Uh, once it gets to the farm and on the land, it becomes the applicator's liability. Those are the kind of factors you want in the contract so that everybody is clear what their responsibility is and what their potential liability is. Okay. Um, all right, uh, hit on this a little bit, but one of the most important is hold harmless and in, in indemnification. Again, if you didn't cause the liability, the other party should take care of any damages or legal expenses that, that you might assume because of that. Um, again, just some more factors. Uh, I'm not going to go into to detail on these either. The last one there, what I like to do on manure application contracts is I like to include a map of the property so that it's absolutely clear where the property is to make sure the, 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 the applicator gets to the right property. I want waterways marked. I want tile outlets marked. I want any you know, unique characteristics of that land that may affect that application clearly marked. It becomes part of the contract so that if some application issue occurs, we can go back and say, well, did the applicator know about it and forget about it or ignore about it? Or did the applicator have no way to know about it because the landowner didn't tell them about it? That's very valuable in uh, resolving issues. Uh, just some high risk factors to consider when you're putting a contract together or negotiating uh, with the other party. Um, these should all be either addressed in the contract or if, if you can't contract them away or address them, at least know that these are the issues 
that could affect your liability. And if you can't do anything about them, maybe you need to increase your price because you have some additional uh, risk uh, due to flooding areas that you can't do anything about. At least you know you have higher risk and you can adjust your price accordingly. Um, assignability is very important, and this applies to many contracts. Um, in Ohio, and I think most states are like this, if you are in a contract with somebody, unless the contract specifically says otherwise, you can assign that contract to someone else. So if you hire an applicator, uh, in, unless the agreement says it can't be assigned, that applicator could take that contract, give it to a different applicator, and now you're in contract as a landowner with a different contractor. And typically we want to take the assignability out of the contract. The contract ought to say this contract cannot be assigned without express written permission, because if you hire somebody to apply manure, or if you're the applicator um, and you get into a contract with a producer or landowner, you want to work directly with that person. You don't want that person to hand off your contract to someone else. What if there's no written contract? Um, this is where you'll get finger pointing. This is where everybody hires attorneys. Uh, this is where expenses get, uh, legal expenses quickly increase. Um, and there's a chance that you could be found liable. Even if you don't think it's your fault, you never know what a judge or jury would do. So we really want to avoid this scenario. There's no reason to at least not have a basic uh, written contract that at least allocates liability fairly. Uh, just some other liability management tools. Uh, one I want to mention in particular is insurance uh, for producers, farmers. Uh, many general farm policy in liability insurance policies do not automatically include environmental coverage. So I tell my clients, uh, when you get your farm policy, make sure it includes environmental liability. If it doesn't, it should be added. You typically can get it. It'll cost you a little more, but I think it's well worth it. The last point there, if you're on the road, lighting and signs must be up to date, working properly. There's no easier way to be liable on the road than if you don't have your SMB on, your, your lights aren't working, the lights aren't on. So if you're on the road, make sure all lights and signs are working because that's just a very easy way to be found negligent. Okay, I know we went through those kind of fast, but um, hopefully that gives you some idea of, of some of the liability issues we deal with. And again, uh, if you are in the, this industry and you don't have a contract, I'd really encourage you to do that. Um, it, it, it's the fairest way uh, to have a good business relationship with everyone and, and allocate any liability issues you may get into.